Hey friends, it's Devin here with Make Anything and I've got a brand new puzzle to share with you today. I think it's super cool and what's more, it was born out of a failed print. A total fluke. I think it's a pretty fun origin story so I'll talk about that a bit today and if that's not intriguing enough, well, what if I told you I've got a bunch of money to give away? That's right. I'm making a little competition out of it. I've got some big prizes to give away to the first people to solve my puzzle. So I'm gonna try not to run on too much in this video because I know you're gonna wanna get to printing and puzzling as quickly as possible. But please stick around because I'm gonna share the cool story about its invention as well as some tips and tricks for solving these puzzles along the way. So the story starts just a couple of weeks ago when I caught a recent video by Steve Mould about auxetic structures. Steve makes all these videos about really cool mathematical and physical principles and stuff like that that he demonstrates in a very physical way. He's got tons of really awesome and inspiring videos. I highly suggest you check out not only the auxetic structure video, but basically just go down the Steve Mould rabbit hole. But yeah, recently Steve shared this video about auxetic structures, which are basically these metamaterials that expand in every direction. One such auxetic structure that Steve shared in his video were these cubes that are connected with duct tape hinges and they move in a very satisfying way where they all twist together and do in fact expand in every direction. He challenged his viewers to come up with some kind of graphic to put on top that would shapeshift when you switch between the different phases of the cube and of course, I was immediately inspired to start trying to figure out that problem. And me being me, well, I also had to come up with a way to 3D print it all. So here are a few of my first successful versions of those auxetic cubes. And the main change I had to make in order for this to be printable was to have these two stacked layers of hinges, since they have to overlap when in the closed position. Once I figured that out, I just had to finesse the design to make sure I can print this without requiring any support material. And by this iteration, I got something that works really nice and smooth straight off of the print bed. On its own, it's pretty useless, but I gotta say, it's really fun to fidget with. And of course, it's a coaster. It's always a coaster. Here's a big 5x5 version I printed and it just gets more mesmerizing at this scale. To top this off, I printed some multicolor panels that snap into place to tackle Steve Mould's shape-shifting challenge. These tiles are really satisfying to connect, and once all of those are in place, we're left with this magically transforming pattern. Oh yeah, I think this speaks for itself. So these auxetic structures are super fascinating, super fun to play around with, and uh, it's something that I'm still exploring like crazy. So there's going to be a future video coming out soon where I share more of my discoveries and creations based around this idea. But as I mentioned, the puzzle I'm sharing today was born out of a failed print. Basically, I was trying to do a filament swap kind of like this, except the printer got snagged on something and I had to stop it halfway through. That left me with this piece that only has half of the hinges, which formed a kind of QB worm. Rather than just throwing that out, I fiddled with this part a bit, and I noticed that it can arrange to form all sorts of different shapes, many of them somewhat non-intuitive, and that made me realize this might be an interesting mechanism for a puzzle. This one little failed print is basically what led me to creating my latest puzzle, which I call Skewbits. Like my failed auxetic print, these Skewbits are made of cubes connected at the corners by hinges. This game uses four Skewbits, and each one is unique in its arrangement of hinges, so they each form their own shapes. The skewbits can be arranged on this grid in hundreds of different ways, and each problem consists of an outline like this. The goal is simply to fit the four skewbits within the outline, but with all the weird ways these can nest together, 
it ends up being a fun little challenge. I've also designed the problems to form the silhouettes of all kinds of cute animals and other satisfying shapes, making this game extra delightful. Now, one thing to consider is that the hinges must also fit within these outlines. That's what these little bumps are for, and while that greatly limits the number of possible solutions, it also provides some very helpful guidance as far as which skewbits will fit in certain spots. The only other rules are that you can't flip the problem or the skew bits, so it might be a good idea to indicate which side is the bottom with a marker or with a filament swap while printing. By default, these problems are printed upside down, which ensures that they'll still fit on the grid even if the first layer of your print is a bit squashed. I think I struck a good balance between making these sturdy enough while not using too much material and printing in about 15 to 20 minutes. I personally used a filament swap to make the grid stand out a bit more, and as you saw I also added a nice cork backing to help with the grip and just to make my skew bits grid extra fancy. This cork sheet was an awesome thrift store find, and it took less than four minutes to cut and engrave on my X-Tool P2 laser cutter. I then used a matte clear coat to seal the engraving so it doesn't smudge, and then some spray adhesive to stick it onto my print. There's also this TPU version of a grip that you can print out for the bottom, but both of these are entirely optional. All you really need to start puzzling are the four skew bits, the grid, and whatever problems you want to solve. And while I won't enforce which colors you should use, I will be releasing a solution guide after the competition is over, so it may be more convenient to use the same colors that I did here. As of today, I'm going to be releasing my puzzle on Thangs. You can download it right now by following the link in the description. I'm also going to have a bunch of puzzles available. The first 15 problems here are going to be free on Thangs for everyone to download and print, at the very least for the rest of the month. And the first person to print out the game and those 15 puzzles and send me proof of solving all of those 15, I'm going to give away a $300 gift card to either Matter Hackers or 3D Jake, the choice is yours. For those of you who are subscribed to my Thangs membership, you'll get the first 25 problems as of today, and whoever solves those 25 first will get a $400 Matter Hackers or 3D Jake gift card. I'll put all the information in terms of rules and how to submit your proof in the description. I'm super excited. I actually don't have any idea how long it's gonna take for some of you to solve all of these problems. I know you're a smart bunch out there, so maybe it'll be a handful of days, maybe it'll be a week, maybe more. I doubt it, but whether you want to race to be the first, or if you just want to try out Skewbits and have fun with this puzzle of mine, uh, go ahead, check it out on Thangs. A lot of people talk about failing fast and failing often, but one thing that maybe goes under the table a bit is to not dismiss those failures, but to maybe let them inspire you and lead to new creations. When you're trying to go after something specific, you're often iterating on things that already exist. But when there's some kind of total fluke or mistake like there was in this case, it can lead to something more original, perhaps. I think this puzzle's pretty original. I haven't looked into it too much, but I'm having a ton of fun coming up with all these different problems and playing around with it and sharing it with some of my family members so far and I'm extremely excited to share it with all of you today. All right, I said I wouldn't ramble, so I'm done. I'm stepping away from this video. Go ahead, start printing and puzzling. The race is on. Skew bits.